What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the rear wheel drive 2024 BMW M340i. This one's finished in mineral white metallic. MSRP is $64,200. Big shout out to Hendrick BMW Northlake for providing this BMW for today's video. Take a look at their website, link down below. Underneath the hood of the 2024 BMW M340i, you're gonna find the three liter inline six cylinder turbocharged engine with a mild hybrid system. It pumps out 382 horsepower with 369 pound-feet of torque. Paired to the ZF8 speed automatic transmission, sending all the power to the rear wheels. Curb weight is about 3,800 pounds, can do zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds, and running on a 15.6 gallon fuel tank, you're gonna expect 23 miles per gallon in the city with 31 out on the highway. Overall length is 185.7 inches with wheelbase at 112.2. Width is 71.9 and height is 56.7 inches. Moving on to the exterior styling with the BMW M340, it's a really mature looking sporty sedan. I really like the black design for the LED headlights. Of course, you can see the daytime running lights throughout them. We have that kidney shaped grill with active grill shutters to improve efficiency and cooling when needed. I like all the gloss black trim surrounding them. You're gonna see more gloss black trim in the farthest corner, along with parking sensors. Get some sharp body lines, and then the lower area in the center also is finished in gloss black. Got a large opening for more cooling with more active grill shutters, parking sensors in the center. It's a good looking car, just super clean and classy. Really can't go wrong. Got the BMW logo right in the center, and then some nice sharp body lines throughout the hood, fading towards that windshield. Moving to the side profile, you have a two-tone set of wheels with the gloss black and machine silver, and I like the M Sport brake calipers finished off in the red. They're four pistons, nice sharp body lines surrounding the wheel arch, and then one sharp line cutting through the side profile with some nice curvature throughout the doors. You have a sharp design for the lower side skirt, and then gloss black for the mirror caps with an integrated turn signal, all gloss black trim surrounding the windows, body color door handles, and a sunroof up on top with a small shark fin antenna. The overall side profile is a pretty proportional looking sedan. It's right in the middle as far as sizing goes, so just really good look overall. It's got a sporty design to it with some bulges surrounding the front and rear fender arch, sharp body line cutting towards the taillight, and I like the look of these LED taillights. You can see the smoked out design, pretty three dimensional, M340 badge, gloss black lip spoiler, with your BMW logo. And then down below, we have more of the gloss black for the rear diffuser, all of your parking sensors, gloss black exhaust tips, nice design for the farthest area with that reflector. And overall, the design of the M340 is very sporty. Taking a look at the key fob, you're gonna have the lock button as the BMW logo, trunk release and unlock. Got the M Sport colors. If I go ahead and keep the car locked, all you have to do is grab the door handle. It will automatically unlock and we can take a look at the interior. This one's gonna have the Cognac perforated Sensatec interior. So a nice synthetic leather material. You can see the black and Cognac color throughout the door panel. Some soft touch plastic, a little bit of padding for your armrest and the door insert. Release handle with memory seating. All of your window controls, some ambient lighting. Storage down below, trunk, as well as a Harman Kardon system. We have the M logo on the door sill with all of your power controls for the seat. And then you get a little bit of color contrast stitching, the perforations, and I also like the extendable leg rest. Pretty comfortable looking seats, nothing crazy sporty. However, they have a nice design. They fit the interior very well. More stitching on the headrest, and then a three-spoke leather wrapped steering wheel with your M logo and the heater button. And then now inside the M340i, keeping my foot on the brake, we can go ahead and fire it up. Taking a look at the gauge cluster now, you have a really cool design with your speedometer on the left, tack over on the right. You can see engine temperature, a few vitals, and then fuel on the far left. If you tap the BC icon, you can see a little bit of the trip information. And then down in the center, we have our drive modes. So if I tap the Eco Pro, you're gonna see how everything changes on the screen. A little bit more conservative design. You're gonna see the power percentage on that far right side. Going into comfort mode, it's pretty normal. 
and then sport mode gets a little bit more aggressive. The head to display also changes a little bit. Hopefully you can see that has a pretty cool design with the tachometer right in the center. Along the steering wheel on the left side, you're gonna see all the cruise control settings, nice logo in the center, some Bluetooth and audio controls, and then we have steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. On the right side, you can see the stock for the windshield wipers, and then turn single stock over on the left side with automatic high beams. Down below, we have all of our controls for the headlights, ambient lighting strip, one of the air vents, the heads of display unit, and the massive curved LCD display for the gauges. You can see more of this soft touch plastic material, and then a cool design for the plastic trim throughout the center. And then moving to the center portion of the screen, we have our climate menu right now. You can see heated seats, temperature down below, zones and everything toggling out of here. We have our full screen navigation system. If you tap the home icon, you can see some nice tiles with all sorts of different information. It's a pretty cool way everything is laid out. In this menu, you have a pretty cool display with torque and horsepower, PSI for the boost, things like that. If we can continue over, route preference, add things, and we have shortcuts over on this left side for navigation and then audio. Going into the apps, we have all sorts of different items in here. So it's a pretty simple screen to use, honestly. It looks a little intimidating at first, but it's pretty easy to get used to. Going into reverse, we have a nice size backup camera with good graphics, all of your parking sensors, and then tapping P, we're back into park. We have our air vents down below, volume on the left, track, defrost icons and hazards, and then pressing that, we can open it up to reveal the two cup holders. We have a spot for the key fob that can go there. We have the plugs and then more controls all throughout the center. We have the rotary dial that you can easily control the screen. You have shortcuts all around it, so I can very easily adjust what you want to see. And then all the shortcuts will give you different ways to view everything. So pretty simple to do. You don't always have to use touch screen. We also have the traction control and parking sensor icon. We have the auto hold and parking brake. And then some smooth material here with a little bit of padding for the armrest with a good amount of storage space down below. Glove box on the far right side is what you would expect. And then taking one last look at the interior. Nothing too crazy fancy in here. It's a nice place to be. Good use of materials overall. I think it looks really nice all around. So nice and sporty with a sophisticated design. We have a black headliner with all of your dome lights. We have the sunshade for the roof. All of those controls are right here along with the LED dome lights, garage door buttons underneath the mirror, and then a pretty good size sun visor. Moving on to the rear seat space, if I grab the door handle and open it up, it also automatically locks and unlocks from the rear handle. But you're gonna see the same interior, all the same colors and everything. You have the ambient lighting, and then moving inside, you're gonna have the same design for the seats with the perforations throughout the center. This can seat three people back here, right in the center. You can also pull this one down. You have a nice armrest along with two cup holders. Closing that, you can also grab this lever up here and pull the entire seat down which is a cool way to have a little bit bigger armrest along with some space into the trunk. Now the headrest does move as well, depending on if you need better driver visibility. And then up in front, you're gonna see your climate vents, few controls along with the USBs. So hopping into the back seat of the M340i, BMW's 3 Series is a pretty good size sedan. Sitting here at 5 foot 11 with the driver's seat at my height, I have a couple inches of knee room. My hair doesn't quite touch the ceiling, so about an inch or so of headroom. Good armrest, good amount of glass in here. While the seats don't recline or anything, the base is low enough in the back to where it supports your legs nicely and it's at a good recline to where it's actually pretty comfortable. So if you're looking for a family sedan that's not crazy big and not too compact, it's a pretty good sized car. Moving on to the trunk area, there's a button right beneath the BMW logo. You have a pretty good sized trunk. Cargo area over on the left side, along with a small one on the right. And you can see just how nice and square off it is. There's handles up above you can pull and then push down the seats in the back. And then it really opens up the interior space. They're gonna fold down nice and flat as you can tell. Still giving you some space up in front, and you have a huge area into that trunk to make this a pretty practical sedan. All right, so setting off now in the M340i in sport mode, everything. We're in sport plus actually, got the cool gauges. <laughs> that B58 has some nice power, the ZF8 speed insanely responsive this is a pretty fun car to drive especially in this mode the steering is pretty tight suspension has tightened up as well it just feels like a nice blend of a car 
taking a sharper turn now. Pretty stable feeling as well. If we go into the Eco Pro, back to automatic, everything, the car relaxes nicely. You still have some weight to the steering wheel. However, it's a little bit more relaxed. The car just completely mellows out. Visibility is really good in this car. Great view out the front. All the mirrors do a great job. And over your shoulders, really can't complain. It's a very normal car to drive. The seats are pretty comfortable as well. Oh, especially like the leg rest, kind of gives you that extra support for longer legs. But it's a nice place to be. Just feels like a nice grown up normal car, especially if you're in the conservative mode and the efficiency coasting stuff. It's cool how it kind of tells you how the car is driving on the efficiency level. So it can kind of show the engine's off right now, just coasting. So nice to see some of that like hybrid type of technology in this car, given it does have the mild hybrid. But this is just a nice overall car to drive. Now, going back into the Sport Plus mode, it definitely sharpens up a lot. You know, if you want true crazy performance, you know, of course the M3, the next step up from this car is going to give you a lot more of that. But this gives you a good blend of the refinements, the luxury side, all the tech you would want, but then a really good sporty side to where you can just have some fun in the M340. It's a very well-rounded car, kind of the best of both worlds. Now, at the same price, if you want extra fun, get the Audi RS3. You're going to sacrifice a little bit of the ease of driving and the space, but you're going to get more of that on-edge fun factor. And if you don't need quite this performance, get a normal 330i and just maybe have the M Sport pack on it that'll dial it up enough even though it has a four cylinder so this is kind of right in that middle slot uh, you know not crazy expensive for what it is and you just get a nice car at the end of the day not too much road noise or wind noise actually there's no wind noise whatsoever a little bit of road noise on the noisier road we were on now on a smooth paved road I mean this is pretty darn comfortable even though we're in Sport Plus you know a lot of people ask us you know is this back braking or anything too hard to drive not at all this is not a harsh car it's very comfortable very relaxed so good blend for sure toggling it back into the conservative drive mode you know really can't complain if you're looking for just a fun well-rounded car with good sizing plenty of good technology and safety features this is a way to go and i like this screen i think it looks really good on here it doesn't just feel like a big tablet stuck on even though that's what it is but it feels nice just a nice well-balanced car Let's do one last acceleration. The brakes also do a great job. Going back into sport. Now the exhaust, you can tell those are all fake pops. So, you know, you're gonna have the fake sounds in this, but overall it's pretty fun. <laughs> so turning around to my perspective, my honest thoughts, I don't think you can really complain with the M340. It is truly just that well-rounded car you get the European refinements to it. It's a nice car to be in. It's comfortable, it's roomy. You have good technology. You have good screens that are easy to use. Not too many configurations with the center screen. However, you know, they're kind of tied into each drive mode, but it gives you all the information you're gonna need, nothing more, nothing less. And at the end of the day, it's a refined luxury car. And given you have that B58 along with a ZF8 speed, you have pretty good performance focused things in this car. To where it wakes up an awful lot <laughs> it's got some good power it's got the good sporty things you're gonna want in a fun to drive car it's pretty confident around the turns very healthy power plan I mean you're not gonna have an issue getting up to some speed there's not really a crazy amount of drama to this car. You know, like I said, the RS3 is going to be more dramatic at this price point. And then the M3, the next step up from this is going to be the one with all the crazy uh, excitement levels. But this has just the good sweet spot of you're not going to be tracking this car going crazy, but you could do a fun mountain trip with it, use it for the day to day going to work and back, hauling the kids around. You can kind of do it all in the M340. And at the price point, you know, it's not going to break the bank given it's a luxury brand vehicle. And I like them a lot. I think it really does give you quite a lot. Not really any complaints, I would say. I'm not sure if you can get full real leather in this car or not. I believe that might be an option. So of course you're gonna get the fake leathers. There are a lot of plastics in here, not really any crazy upscale materials. You do have the leather on the steering wheel, which feels really nice in your hands. 
and I think it looks good in here. It's not crazy uh, fancy, but this screen gives it a modern design. Not everybody likes this new screen, but honestly, I've grown to like it quite a lot. I wasn't a fan when I first saw them either. However, once you kind of get used to the different tiles, it's actually really easy to use and understand. So I like the tech in the BMWs, the modern ones. They kind of just give you what you need and they're easy. Now, I wouldn't mind some climate control buttons. However, they're always right here. So you just have to tap one section of the screen and they're right there. So really can't complain. I don't think there's really anything crazy that uh, jumps out as something I don't like about this car. The fake exhaust sounds are definitely noticeable. Normally they do a better job of hiding them, but in this car, when you downshift and stuff, you can hear it in your feet where the sound is coming from with the speaker. So a little gimmicky on the fake engine sounds. But aside from that, you know, if you're looking for just a good all around car, this is something to take into consideration. But that's about it then for the 2024 BMW M340i, the rear wheel drive one. Pretty cool, you get a little bit lively rear end, you know, you get a little tail happy. The X drive is a great way to go if you want that all wheel drive capabilities for inclement weather, things like that. But this is a fun car. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, stay tuned for plenty more content, and then take a look at Hendrick BMW Northlake. Big shout out to them for providing this car for today's video. Take a look at their website, link down below, and I'll see you all in the next video. Later, 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 later.